why put billions upon billions of dollars into clean or green coal, if, if you will, when we could put it into known technologies, when we could put it into nuclear, when we could put more into wind, more into solar. Why push money somewhere and we don't know the outcome? And as you said, Bill, if, if we don't have a positive outcome in terms of really pinpointing the technology needed, then it's an absolute failure. Well, I think, I think one way, just as a capitalist, you do it for the market opportunity, because this, ultimately, if there is any sort of global regime for carbon, the Chinese will have to retrofit. You know, uh, the Chinese are the most pragmatic people on the face of the earth. They are not building coal plants today, and someone comes along and tells them, shut it down five years from now, when it has a 50-year life. They're, not just, they're just not going to do it. So you better find a way for that uh, flue gas coming out of the back of that coal plant to, to not put carbon into the atmosphere. Yeah, and they're doing the same thing now uh, that, that a lot of our guys are saying, which is, you know, they were, everyone heard this, the horror story, they're building a new 600-megawatt uh, coal plant every week. And that's not a horror story then, that's progress. No, it's progress. <laughs> and, of course, all of those plants were unscrubbed and no NOx controls and their air pollution problems were horrible. Well, they're still building a whole bunch of coal plants at not quite the same pace, but fast, but they are retrofitting all of their those coal plants now with scrubbers and SCR. So it's just more capital that they're putting in, which means they're going to operate them longer. And Rebecca, you, you know, you said why coal? And what I'm assuming you mean is why not turn to other known technologies? Mm -hmm. Why not push yeah. ourselves off of coal and our addiction to it, if you will? Um, where, where else would you look? Because when you look at the pie chart and you look at wind and solar, it's just depressing. It's 2%. Yeah. It is depressing. And I think that the first place that we need to look is energy efficiency. And I think that's, you know, it's been called the first fuel, and I think we need to take it really seriously. And I don't think we should kid ourselves that getting to the kind of CO2 reductions that we need to get to in the time period we have isn't going to mean a shift in our lifestyle and a shift in our consumption patterns. I think that there is a tendency to want to think that we're going to be able to make this shift while still having exactly the same energy consumption patterns that we've had for the last 20, 25 years. Um, so energy efficiency, I think, is a part of that. I think there's going to be changes in the way we consume energy and, the, and our lifestyles. Sure, and, and, you know, American households can turn their lights off and they can, you know, run their dishwashers at night. But we, we need big businesses to prosper. People eat meat. And, and when you look at, at the beef industry versus sure. uh, transportation industry, it's emitting more methane and hurting the environment more sure. so. So the, the question is, what's realistic? Right. And I think that the other, I mean, I guess what's realistic and... If you take a look at, you know, to, to riff on the, the China piece, if you look at where China's putting all their energy right now, sure, they're building coal-fired power plants, but they're investing the vast, so their vast amounts of ingenuity in there in, into the renewable sector. That's where they're actually leaping over us. Look, uh, That's where we're about to build American dust. businesses are building a, what Applied Materials built their biggest solar plant in China. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. Stop here right now. Go to China. Go talk to leadership in China. Go talk to the utilities in China. China is, they're electricity consumption now is remains a fraction of what it is in the United States. And and let's take the base as 100, it's, let's say it's going to 200. Today, electricity is in China's coal is 80% of 100. It'll be 60% of 200. 60% of 200 is higher than 80% of 100. They're putting in renewables. They're putting in nuclear. They're also developing a billion tons a year of additional coal production in western China which is 2,500 miles from the coast. They're putting in coal chemical plants, coal to liquid plants, uh, coal-based electricity generation plants. They build solar plants for the American market. They, they, talk, they talk about uh, instability in the grid. They talk about instability in the grid from, from wind. Um, they're, they're doing all of the, they're saying all of the things that Rebecca says they're saying, but they are also, there's a massive build-out of coal in China. There's a massive build-out of coal in India. And I want to say here to this group, on the record, in public, it's a good thing, not a bad thing. Uh, the first and, and, and overriding value is always available, affordable, electric energy for people. For the American people, for the people in China, for the people in India, every human on Earth has a right to live as well as everybody sitting in this room, everybody sitting in this resort, everybody that lives on this coast, everybody that lives on the other coast, and people in between. And uh, that means we are going to use coal, we're going to use it cleaner, and we're going to use it greener, but we're going to use it, and they're going to use it too. <clears throat> so if you're concerned about climate change, there's one answer, and that's a massive investment by the United States government in partnership with industry to develop a green coal industry and to develop right now. And if we don't, 
Waxing Gopher Drive because the climate change argument is over.